On August 31st, the NASA doctors and NESC's Clint Craig arrived. The first day we arrived at the mine, the Chileans divided us, the four of us up, with our counterparts. And so the doctors went with the doctors and the psychologists went with the psychologist and I, I was assigned to the, uh, the engineers. But I also spent a lot of time with a naval officer there. It turned out that this officer that I hung around a lot with uh, was an ex-submarine commander. His, his name was uh, Captain um, Renato Navarro. And, you know, an ex-submarine captain like myself, and, and we immediately hit it off. And it was through him that I got to meet uh, the Chilean Navy engineers who were there to do a site survey uh, on how to build this rescue capsule. I had access to any and all of the people in the NESC should I need them. And I ended up calling back several times to uh, Tim Barth, one of our NESC members from Kennedy. You know, we were thinking about how these guys could get fresh water down there. We had an atmosphere specialist on our team talking about measuring the toxic gases and things like that. There were so many miners, they were trapped so far underground. The Chileans decided to have three rescue holes, each one using a different technology and a different company. And they called those Plan A, Plan B, and Plan C. While the three separate drills pushed forward, engineers were creating the capsule that would eventually carry the miners to safety. The Chilean Navy, with design help from NASA, constructed the steel rescue capsule dubbed Phoenix. I was able to meet some other naval officers who were there uh, from the Chilean uh, engineer side of their, their organization. So uh, I began talking to them about some of the requirements that were levied on them. I was interested to find out that they were only told what the max diameter of the vehicle could be and the max height. We talked to a, a number of individuals at the site, you know, asking them how long they thought this extraction for each miner was going to take. And the, values that we got were anywhere between one and four hours. So when we were talking with the Chilean naval engineers about this capsule, you know, we, we began saying, well, there's other things that you need to probably put into this capsule. If the, if the ride could last that long, you know, you're, you've got hydration issues, um, things that, uh, you know, what, what happens if the miner has a medical emergency on the way up, um, what, if the, what if it gets stuck, and things like that. In a 12 to 13 page list of requirements, the NASA team proposed over 50 design features and medical procedures. We put together a team of uh, 20 engineers, mostly from the NESC, but uh, from across the agency, to uh, put together a number of these desi uh, suggested design requirements. And uh, over the course of three days, we spent every day, all day, doing this. And some of those suggested requirements were uh, that the capsule, for example, ought to be able to account for friction. Uh, two of the boreholes were going to be just rock faces. And so we thought that for a capsule that was going to have to make at least 33 round trips, that they needed to ensure that it wasn't scraping along the way, things like that. And we suggested that they could either use something like Teflon blocks or spring-loaded rollers. And they ended up using spring-loaded rollers. Another suggestion was that the design ought to be uh, able to be operated by a single miner, that he ought to be able to get in the vehicle and secure himself by himself, precisely because there's going to be a last guy at one point and he's not going to have any assistance. Um, we recommended that they have oxygen on board the capsule um, to support uh, perhaps bad air on, on the way up in this lengthy travel. We thought that the capsule ought to have lighting for not only for situational awareness and, and morale of the, the miner, but in case something happened that he would be able to at least see to report. We recommended two-way audio communications, um, again, for uh, minor morale and to help in any issues that might come up. So those were the kind of suggestions that we ended up uh, providing. In the final design, most of NASA's recommendations were accepted. On Tuesday, October 12th, 69 days after they were trapped, the first miner breathed fresh air and saw sunlight. 33 hours later, the last miner, Louise Erzua, stepped into the arms of his son.